What's going on YouTube? Today I want to talk about the recent CVE on Grafana. I think it's CVE 2021-43798. Uh, this CVE is around a path traversal discovered on Grafana that allows you to pretty much read any file on the box without being authenticated into the application itself. So for this video, I'm going to talk about why it's important to look for it, how to look for it, and how the vulnerability is exploited. This CV, as I mentioned, doesn't require to be authenticated. It could be affecting a ton of different organizations. And of course, if you're hacking on programs that are allowing you to hack on their entire scope, that means every supplement, every organization, acquisition, the website they own, then this vulnerability could get you paid a lot. But before we talk about the money aspect, before we talk about the POC, before we look at it, I want to make a note and say this is a zero day. So that means that a lot of companies haven't fixed it and there is a chance that they may decline the bounty payment for this vulnerability because of the fact that it's a zero day and that they haven't had a time to fix it. So keep that in mind, just because you have an O day and you have the POC for it, doesn't mean that the companies are going to pay you for it. Most companies may pay for this vulnerability, but again, some companies may come back and say, hey, we have a 30 day, 60 day or 90 day window when we don't pay for vulnerabilities like this one and acknowledged by the company itself. So I just want to get that out of the way before we jump in. So like I mentioned earlier, this is a path traversal. If you're not familiar with path traversals, this vulnerability allows you to pretty much get out to the web route where the actual website is being hosted. And you can actually read every file, not every file, almost every file that's hosted on the server. The reason why I say not every file, it's because this all depends on what user you're running this Grafana instance on, what access it has, what files have access to and that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, it allows you to read files. And in some cases, you may be able to actually pull the configuration file that may lead username and passwords. And maybe you can do some more stuff with it. But before we jump into the path traversal part, I want to take a look at Grafana itself. Can I take a look at it and see what does Grafana look like? How do we identify it when we're mass scanning for subdomains against an infrastructure? And also how to actually hunt for this vulnerability in, in a mass. So again, we're going to look for identification. We're going to look at the POC and then we're going to spray an entire network or a list of subdomains and domains to see if any of them are vulnerable. But before everybody comments down below and says, hey, that's illegal, you can't do this. Keep in mind that everything that I've created, it's a lab of my own. So I've actually installed Grafana on my own. I have my own instance. So everything you see is in a lab environment that I've created. You can also do the same. All you have to do is go look up how to install Grafana. You can install that particular version and play around with it and actually exploit this thing. All right, let's jump into the identification part. So at a first glance, this is what Grafana looks like. When you open up the web page, most of the times you could expect it to be hosted on port 3000, but that's always not the case. Uh, so once you load it, this is what it looks like. A few things to note is it's redirecting us to login. You can see the title says Grafana. There is this fave icon. There's also text that says the version for it right here. So we can see whether or not it's vulnerable. And of course, if we look at the source, there are a couple of other key things that we can look at that kind of explain this is uh, Grafana. And I'm gonna show you what that all means in just a bit. But at a first glance, you wanna kind of know, okay, if I query this website, and let's do this on the screen. So there's different ways you can identify it. And I wanna walk you through the manual process before we walk into Shodan, Google Dorking, and that sort of stuff. So first of all, if you make a request to just the uh, web root itself, it's gonna come back and say, hey, there's a location being sent to login. This is really not a fingerprint for Grafana. Tons of different applications could do this, but if it's hosted on port 3000, it redirects it to login there is a big chance that this could be a Grafana instance. So the port 3000 is a big one, but also the location header right here could also indicate that potentially there is a Grafana instance here. Now let's send a request to login and say we actually follow the redirect. And if we look at the source of this, obviously the Grafana title is a big one. I mentioned that earlier. And then also if you're using stuff like Meg where you get to save the entire HTTP request, it could be Meg, it could be HTTPX, uh, any of those tools that save the output of the request, 
You can actually also fingerprint and grip for this file right here to make sure in the response of the request you meant to this web browser, this file existed. And if obviously it exists, then you will know that this is a Grafana instance. I wanna talk about these because I understand there are templates for Nucle, there is Shodan, there's all these different tools you can use, but it doesn't hurt to know what makes this unique. What are some ways to identify this thing on your own before you start using those tools? Again, tools are great, but it's better when you know how to use them first. So now we're going to jump into Shodan. So one of the easiest ways to do this, it's obviously Shodan. What you're gonna do is you can look for the title that says Grafana. That's gonna be a very easy one. You can just see all these different ones that are hosted on there. Again, please don't test these out without consent or without uh, a bug bounty program or a vulnerable disclosure program. We can also go as far as identifying a host name. So for example, if you are looking for uh, Verizon Media itself, you can type in yahoo.com. If there's a Grafana, it would come up. So again, you can do host name like this and put Grafana in there as well and it will come up. You can also fingerprint based on the fave icon. So if you click on this, it gives you the hash and you can do something like org is Yahoo, for example. And if that hash exists, it will bring it back. Um, obviously Amazon is a big one, but again, this is Amazon as a service provider, not uh, Amazon as a company. So these could be their customers but I just kind of wanted to show that you can do that based on the organization itself. So again, maybe you can do Red Bull in here. If Red Bull had one, it will come up and so on. Another thing you can do is if you've been doing bug bounties for two years and you already have historic data, let's say you have collected all this data on all these different organizations and you've saved them. Every domain, every supplement you've ever found, it's saved somewhere on your box. What you can do is you can do a couple of things. One is I would port scan. Port scan for port 3000, see which ones are open, even if it doesn't mention Grafana in the supplement. The second thing I would do, which makes sense with what I just said, actually gripping for the keyword Grafana. So every supplement that has a keyword Grafana in it, or maybe dashboard in it, uh, analytics, stuff like that, and seeing what comes up, looking at it, and based on the fingerprints that we wrote, seeing whether or not Grafana is hosted on there. So now that we all know all this, I'm going to create a list of different random subdomains and put one Grafana instance in there. And we're gonna use one of the tools that I have. I think I'm gonna use HTTPX for this example and see how I can identify that one instance in a list of 20 random subdomains. So let's look at it really quick. So I have a bunch of different domains in this and I understand these are all fake but I'm purposely doing a bunch of different random domains. Obviously the outcome doesn't matter. We're just going to use this example list to identify this one that we know as Grafana, but we're gonna assume that we don't know which one of these is hosting Grafana. So we're gonna open it up, we're gonna read it, and we're going to feed this to HTTPX, and we're gonna use the SRD uh, option. This will tell it to save the outputs of this uh, HTTP request into a folder, so we're gonna call this HTTPX. So that means when you make a request, I want you to also save the output of that request into this folder. And we're just going to just run it as it is. So right now we have done all of these. It's made a request to all of them. And if we make a list, we'll see that HTTPX has some stuff in it. We're gonna go in here and there's nothing in there. That's fantastic. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some of these hosts that I've put together. So in this case, you can see I have a ton of domains. Again, I understand that some of these don't make sense for this example, but the point is to kind of show you how you can identify a particular thing in a list of domains and subdomains. And that thing we're looking for right now, obviously, is Grafana. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna read our file and we're going to fit to HTTPX and we are going to tell HTTPS we're going to tell HTTPX to scan for ports 443 and 3000. And we're going to use the flag SR. That means to save the response for each request. And we're also going to use this flag, the dash FHR, which is follow host redirects, just in case we hit the login. It's going to redirect to the login. We want to make sure we follow it. So we're going to send this request really quickly. And what this will do, let's see what I do wrong. Looks like I use the wrong flag, so we're gonna do this one instead. And let's see where this goes. Hopefully this one works, and we can see the outcome of all of these requests, especially those that have followed the host redirects as well. So let's give it a sec. Um, let's look at the outputs folder, and we're gonna specifically look at the one that we know is vulnerable. I just wanna make sure it worked. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. Again, I know that I'm cheating and showing you that this is here, but let's just say that there are thousands of files and now we want to 
identify all the ones that have Grafana in it. So as you remember earlier, when I said, if we do a curl to this, so this is our instance, if we make a curl request to it, this is what the request is gonna send back. And one of the things that we were looking at was this specific file. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, I want you to read all the files in this folder and grep for this. And again, you can just do grep, the string that you're looking for uh, and all the files in there. But since I'm explaining things, I'm gonna break down the commands one by one. So you cat all the files in there, grep for the specific one. And this comes back. And of course we can also use the, I believe it's the R flag. I should say the file's name right here. As you can see, it says this file has this exact string in it. And this will tell us that this file right here is the one that contains the host. So it says this is the host name for it. And it has the Grafana fingerprint that we have given it. And it indicates that there is a Grafana instance in here that we could take a step further and actually exploit this with the vulnerability. All right, we've done all this. I know it took us a while to get here, but now let's look at the vulnerability itself. And we're gonna bring this whole thing back together and wrap it up into a whole package on how you can actually exploit all these. So the vulnerability tells us the path traversal requires you to go to the plugins folder, give it a plugin that exists based on what I understand, and then you're gonna traverse out of that folder and read whatever file you want. So lucky for us, I have a Grafana instance ready. All right, so what we're gonna do over here is we're gonna go to the plugin section and we're going to look at the list of all these plugins. Again, all these plugins that you can see on this screen were installed by default as soon as you spin up a new Grafana instance. And you can get the path for it by clicking on each one. So this one is plugin alert list. This one is anno list and so on. So everything, everything you click on has its own name and you wanna make sure you make a note of every single one of these just in case uh, the first one is disabled. For example, if a company has disabled alert list but has annotations list, you wanna make sure you have that in your tool belt so you can actually test against every single one of these and find one that the company has not disabled and exploit it for this vulnerability. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back here. Before this video, I actually cleared all these. Let's go back again, one more folder. I've created all of these ones. Uh, I think I found this on a GitHub repo. I'll make sure to link it down below in the description if you wanna look at it. But these are the different paths that I've found. Again, you can make a list of them based on going into Grafana itself, pulling up a repository on GitHub that has Grafana installed, whatever that is, you can get your hands on. That gives you the link to it. You wanna add public in that plugin's name right here. And then the exploit that you wanna use is, we want to read the ETC password file and see where this goes. Okay, so now that we know how the vulnerability works, we have the paths that we need. Let's go ahead and look at this vulnerability on the instance I've created. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my proxy on burp. I'm gonna refresh this page and we're gonna send this to repeater. Let's send this to repeater. Now we're gonna to go to our other folder right here. I'm gonna look at these paths and we're gonna just try one of them and see if it works. If it does work, then we know this is a vulnerable instance. So let's copy paste this here. I'm gonna send this request. Let's fix our request completely. And we're gonna send this. And as expected, this has came back and uh, given us the contents of the ETC password. Again, if you're not sure whether or not this exists, let's say hypothetically this comes back and says, hey, this doesn't exist, so I'm just gonna give it a invalid name. It's gonna come back and say plugin not found. What we can do is we can go here and send this to intruder. I'm gonna to go to intruder and we are going to paste all of our payloads. And we're gonna to go to our position. So let's say you already have identified Grafana, you're not masking everything for it. It's just one instance you have found, you wanna exploit it. We're going to just do that here and add this. So what we're doing here is we're saying, hey, all this stuff that I have in my payloads, I want you to put it right here instead of this web root and scan for it. So we're gonna start our attack. And as you can see, there are some errors. I'm not sure why. Looks like we actually need to disable in the options, disable our Encoding. So right here, you go to payloads. You wanna make sure you have this disabled. I'm gonna try this one more time. Go to intruder and start attack. And now we can see there are some that are coming 404. So let's just sort them out. There's two that are coming 404. I don't have alert groups and canvas playing apparently. 
which wasn't the list that I found online, which I'll link it again down below in the description. But the other ones that are vulnerable, you can see it came back with a 200 and every single one of them are displaying the file that I wanted to look for. Cool, now we know how the exploit works. We know what Grafana looks like. Okay, now we know how the exploit works, how to look for it, how to identify Grafana. And now we're gonna bring this whole thing together using Meg. Again, you can use other tools like Nucle, they're great, but because of the fact that I have created this automation thing for myself where there's a diff bunch of different things, I rely on Meg for this to work. So again, you don't have to do Meg, but I'm gonna show you how I use Meg to identify a vulnerable instance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell Meg, hey, I have a list of potential hosts that are Grafana. So this is after you have identified all your Grafana instances, you're gonna tell Meg, hey, this is the, the paths that we have, and I want you to run every single one of those against the host file. And again, this could be potentially all the different Grafana instances that you have collected, identified using the steps that I've shown earlier, and now we're going to scan for it. So now that it's done, we're gonna take a look at the output folder for Meg. So this is what it looks like. If you actually look at the out index file, it will show you the request for each one and the results for it. So again, this is coming back and saying, hey, this was 200, 404, 400, and so on. So what we can do with this information is we can actually look for ones that come back with 200 okay. Oops, let's do one more time. And these are all the files and you can cut it up and take this portion of it. So we can do something like cut dash D F1, which gives us the folder where it's saved. And then we can feed it to Xargs and have it read every single one and grip for uh, the contents of ETC password file. Luckily, I have created this command right here. I'm gonna show you really quickly. This does the exact thing that I described. What it does is you give it a status code. So in this case, I'm looking for status code 200 and whatever fingerprint you're looking for. So again, you can also use this for fingerprinting things using Meg, but in this case, I want to look for the keyword root because I'm expecting root to be in the ETC password file. And that's gonna give us the output of all these different requests that it's made. And obviously it's saying, hey, this is the one of the folders or one of the hosts that's vulnerable out of all these different uh, ones that we've scanned. So again, I know that this is not a whole lot. It's an example. But if you actually open one of these, you can see that the ETC password file is also in there. So now that we've talked about how to use Meg, what we can do is, nope, that's it. And that's it, right? So this is what I would do if I was looking for this vulnerability. One, remember, you can't expect to get paid. This is still considered an O-Day. A lot of organizations may not be ready to pay for it, while some others may actually accept and pay for it. Two, what I would do is go through a list of all the subdomains I have and find the ones that are Grafana using what I just showed, fingerprint for it, use HTTPX, dump all of the outputs of the HTTP request into a folder, grab for it, make a list of potential Grafana instances, and then feed it to Meg and have it scan for those particular endpoints and see which ones come back as vulnerable and then report it. Maybe it'll be a dupe, maybe it'll be a valid finding, or maybe the company is gonna come back and say, hey, we're currently not accepting this phone type and we're not gonna pay for it. All right, if you like this video, do me a favor, drop a like, hit that subscribe button, but also leave me a comment. Let me know if you learned something new, if you want me to make more videos like this, if you learn a new technique, whatever it is, let me know if you liked it. I wanna know what kind of videos to make for you guys. But until the next video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on in the next video. Peace. Is that mic right here? Oh, the mic is in the camera this whole time. Just a tiny bit, I can crop it out. But it's gonna be cropped out to here, bro, look. The mic is right here. Come down a little bit? Oh, you can bring it to you. I can bring it to you. Drop me a like and subscribe. Tell me what you think. Are you, are you for real right now? Is this a joke? <laughs>